right, welcome back for another episode of Dollar Bin Digging. This is the video and article that I do for comicbookinvest.com where I talk about those books that you can still dig out of those cheap boxes, those dollar bins, those discount boxes, wherever you find your cheap comics, whether it be at flea markets, your LCS, uh, half price books, books a million, wherever you're finding cheap comic books, Goodwills, flea markets, it doesn't matter. These are things you can probably still find based off of some of the recent news, rumors, things going on in the comic books, etc. Just stuff that I think is kind of fun to go and look for when you go out digging this weekend. Uh, hopefully you're still enjoying this series as well as everything else here on the channel. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Please like, subscribe, hit the alert button so you don't miss anything. Keep telling your friends so we can keep growing the channel. Consider joining up and checking out our membership where we'll be doing some members only videos as well as some other fun stuff uh just for you guys that want to help support the channel and with that all said if you want to see what books i got for you this week just hang on for a few seconds after the intro and i will be right back Okay, so for this week, we are going to start in with mostly DC books. I don't know, for one reason or another, all the stuff this week was all DC related. That was interest interesting to me, at the very least. Uh, just last night on the uh, tag show, we introduced our new comic review section, and we got to read uh, the most recent issue of Nightwing. So that's where we're going to start. Uh, Marco did a good job covering this on the C-list, but just to go a little bit further... I like to go through this on Dollar Bin Digging as well, because Nightwing's latest issue, you know, with issue 100, had a lot going on, status quo change potentially, and he faced off against a couple of uh, classic villains that you can still find there first for pretty cheap. Uh, go out there digging and look for that... Uh, Look for that KG Beast who shows up in this issue as well. Uh, I mean, that issue is uh, you know, one that you should be looking for. I mean, here he is. He's being reintroduced as part of this storyline to go face off against Nightwing. And, uh, you know, this is a good book. If you can still find it, it can still get you a nice little return, depending on the condition that you find it in. So go look for that Batman 417, starting off that uh, Ten Nights of the Beast storyline. It's a pretty cool uh, little arc. I don't want to say mini because it took place during the regular Batman series, but it's a nice little arc that I think is worth uh, worth your time to read if you can find all of them. And that first issue in that uh, story arc was the first appearance of uh, KG Beast here. Granny doesn't have that familiar look that we know him by yet, but this is him and he's you know throughout this issue uh, as well. As I mentioned, this does okay on its own already. Uh, this is a book that has recent sales, you know, around the 20, 22 bucks. Uh, granted, that $20 sale there is a lot. Uh, you know, it's a it's a whole lot of, uh, you know, of the storyline. So you got all four issues, I believe, if not more. Uh, and then that other one is actually a lot of uh, a four for $22 as well. And then the one in the middle that is $22 on its own actually is signed. So realistically, this book, you know, has sold... You know, 20 bucks for the whole storyline, you know, thereabouts. And uh, if you want to break it down per issue, you figure what, maybe five to five to eight bucks, just roundabout. Uh, and when you look at the copies that are out there available to you, yes, there are copies as cheap as like 10 bucks and they go as high as 30. So again, condition sensitive. Some people are going to ask a premium for newsstand for one reason or another. Up to you. I'm telling you, go look in the cheap boxes, not go paying market. That's the whole point of this. Yes, anybody can go online, type in a title and go buy a comic book. That's not what makes this hobby fun to me. So these are some titles, I think, when you're out there digging in those back issue bins, in those dollar bins, that you just flip through and see if you can find them. And if you do, you know, consider. Cons I'm not even saying you have to. Consider picking up, picking it up for the, either the read, the investment, or whatever. I think it's just a fun little, uh, fun little thing to do. Let's keep this hobby fun after all. I mentioned there are more than one villain uh, in, in this issue. So apart from KG Beast being brought into the fray to fight uh, Nightwing, and not to you know to spoil it too much, but if you saw the review, we kind of did get into this, but the Titans return. So not just Nightwing, but all of the Titans together uh, are in this issue. And they all team up to go and uh, take down another villain uh, that was also broken out of the uh, Bloodhaven uh, prison, which was Elephant Man. Not Man Elephant. From the Marvel side of things that was in She-Hulk, but Elephant Man. And his first appearance can be found in a very cheap book still. This Teen Titans number 35. Uh, he's right there right on the cover too as well. So, I mean, we don't have to go into the guts of the book, but he's right there on the bottom corner above the uh, barcode. But I'm going to show you inside. There he is inside as well. So 
here, here, here you go. There, there's the first appearance of, uh, you know, Elephant Man. Now, this book hasn't even sold within the last three months that I could find. So this is definitely dollar bin fodder. This is stuff. There's a ton of these Teen Titans books that you can find. And this is right around the range. I think it's issue 37. That's the first Miss Martian. It has, um, you know, I can't think of the the, the, the demon boy on, on the cover. The, the, the red kid. Uh, red devil. I don't remember what his name is off the top of my head. But point being, issue 37 is one that's been grabbed and specked on a lot because of the first Ms. Martian. But uh, this 35 is sitting there as well because this they're just out there uh and you can even buy them online look even online they're as cheap as a dollar so you can go dollar been digging even online uh dollar two dollars as high as six bucks but none have sold within the last three months so keep that in mind as well so like i said i'm not telling you to go and invest in elephant man because you're going to get rich or this is the next big key issue this is for fun this is hobby should be fun and this is just a fun first appearance that i think you can go and grab for a buck or less even, uh, depending on how your shop prices things, or wherever, again, you're buying your cheap comics. So just go have fun. Go hunt this stuff just for the sake of it, because uh, yeah, that's what the comic collecting should be. Uh, that said, PSA is on. I'm not saying you can't go and make money, too, because you know everybody wants to make a little money. But uh, just the whole point of this is not about uh, all about making money, I should say. So let's get to the next one. This is another fun story that I think uh, you know, can cause you to go, go out there digging. It's not anything confirmed. It's all just rumor. It's basically the, the actor, the Eternals actor, Kumail Nanjiani, saying that he wants to join the DCU and he'd want to play Ambush Bug. He's not saying he's going to play Ambush Bug. It's not saying that we're getting Ambush Bug. But he's just, you know, saying what he'd love to do. Nothing wrong with that. So it got me thinking, well, what about Ambush Bug? Can we find Ambush Bug's first appearance for cheap? Yeah, you probably can. Uh, this is in DC Comics Presents number 52. You know, the series that also gave us He-Man. I think, what was that, 47, thereabouts? Uh, but 52, inside the guts of this book, we get Ambush Bug. And it's not just these panels here. He, he's in throughout the story uh, as well. But you got the first appearance of Ambush Bug in this DC Comics Presents 52. And it's not that expensive of a book. I'm not saying it's definitely in a dollar bin, but it's something to keep an eye out for because a lot of this old DC stuff does get thrown to the side, especially if it's not super high grade. So keep that in mind as well, that maybe the copy you find for a buck ain't going to be the cleanest copy in the world. But as I said, this should be fun. So let's see if you guys can go and find a first ambush bug for a dollar or so when you go out there digging. Because realistically, some recent sales, uh, best offer on, on like eight bucks, a copy sold for like 10 bucks. Again, you're not going to get rich finding this first appearance. It's just kind of for fun. Maybe find a couple, maybe make a couple of bucks, but copies out there asking right now are more 10 to 15 for the individual. And you can also see there's a lot of uh, like four issues that is only, only asking $13 as well. So once again, not an expensive book. Even if you do find it, it's not going to make you rich. But it could be fun. Now, to break up the DC uh, stories I have here, I do have one indie that we can throw into the middle of this. Just kind of shake things up, mix things up, give you a little bit of a palate cleanse if you uh, aren't all about the DC, I guess. And that's just a reminder about Nemesis. Uh, there have been a ton of these uh, Malarverse titles that have been coming out. Actually, too many for me to keep up with these days. Uh, just so many new series. Uh, I, I, use, I enjoy most of these little minis, but uh, I'll, I'll be honest. There have been so many with the Magic Orders and, and uh, the Super Crooks and going back in the day. To some of the newer ones that are rolling out here, I uh, just can't keep up. But Nemesis was a fun one. That original Nemesis was a fun, almost like an evil Batman kind of like uh, character. So that him coming back to this with another volume uh, is make, makes me think of that original volume. So go and look for it again, because these Millarverse books are out there. I say Millar, Millerverse, I guess. I, I always want to pronounce it weird because it's got an A in it. It's not an E, but, you know, I think it's just pronounced Miller. So the Millerverse books are out there. Just go digging. Uh, I know most of the kick-asses have been grabbed, at least the first one, but you know there's tons of these, the black you know, black covers, uh, pretty standardized image books that you can go and find. So go digging, see if you can find some Nemesis, because, you know, why not, right? Uh, that said, Millar's Nemesis, this issue one, this is it. There's also two, three, and four. Show you the covers as well. There's a couple of variants, too, uh, but I'm not going to show you all of those, but keep an eye out for any of them. Uh, if you find them for cheap, go ahead. Go ahead and grab them. But this in particular... You can see here the whole run could get you about 40 bucks as one sold recently. And then the individual number one, like 12 bucks to like $17. So eh, it makes you may might make a few bucks if you find this in a dollar bin. But once again, that's not what this is all about. Uh, asking prices again, 
12 bucks for issue one. Some random issues could be as cheap as like five bucks. And there's some auctions for some of the, the whole you know mini series. Right now, one's at like $26. That's going to end later tonight. We'll see. It probably end in that uh, 30 to $40 range as well. So just kind of bank on that. There's maybe about 40 bucks for the whole set. But that said, I just wanted to throw that one in there in the middle for you to go out and check out. Go look for it, you know, just for fun. Like I said, it was a good read. The, the first run was a solid read uh, from what I recall. It's been a while, though. Uh, and I haven't read the new one yet, but I'm, I'm pan planning on picking that up just to check it out, too. Uh, that said, we are going to go back to DC. No Marvel for you this week. Sorry, all you Marvelites, but uh, we're all about DC for whatever reason this week. A lot of interesting DC stuff that's got me looking for books. Uh, and like I said, Nightwing was one of the best books I read this week. So that Nightwing 100 uh, was a pretty solid read as well. So, But with that, we're going to go and uh, look over at Superman. Uh, well... Superboy, I guess, John Kent. Um, but he's traded in his addition, his traditional powers, and he seems to be getting the electrical powers. That's what seems to be being teased here in this uh, Lazarus Lazarus Planet assault on Krypton. It's, I guess mini one shot. Uh, wait, well, yeah, it's one shot. A little side story to the Lazarus Planet uh, storyline. So this one shot, it looks like we might be getting Electric Blue Superman, but it's going to be Electric Blue John Kent Superman uh, potentially. Uh, I don't know if it's a long-term thing, short-term thing, or what, but they're definitely teasing it here. So it's got people already looking for that uh, original blue Superman, uh, which means they're probably going to go and find the red Superman, too, after that. But we're only going to stick with the blue for right now when he first showed up. We're going to start with the glow-in-the-dark cover because this is everybody's favorite. Everybody loves this one for one reason or another. I mean, it's a fun cover. It's different. I was not a fan of this storyline. I thought Electric Superman was kind of dumb, but that was just me. I mean, it was 97. This just wasn't my cup of tea, personally. But for fun, go and look for this book. I found this plenty of times in, in, the, in the cheap boxes, and there are probably still plenty out there because this was heavily printed. There, there were plenty of these out there. Not hard to find at all. Uh, that said, copies only sell for about 10 bucks, 8 bucks to 10 bucks. Again, not going to make you rich. Uh, don't let FOMO get a hold of you, and don't start overpaying for this thing just because all of a sudden people are talking about this uh, blue Superman. That's really the upper limit, I think, for this co this comic. But uh, asking prices are in that kind of $10 to $15 range still. So there's still plenty of copies at that price point if you wanted to go and buy it online. But like I said, that's no fun. Go out there, dig in the boxes, find it for a buck or two. I'm sure you'll get lucky and you'll find it. But if you can't find the glow-in-the-dark version or the you know this, uh, this cover, I should say, um, then also look for the regular edition as well because, you know, it's the same book. Same thing happens, same thing in the guts. So this is the same uh, Superman 123. If I forgot, sorry if I forgot to mention that. It's Superman 123 from 1997. But um, this one sells for a little bit cheaper, obviously. It's not as cool, doesn't have the gimmicks uh, going on with it, but still can go from five to 15 bucks, as you can see here. And the asking prices as well. The only ones I could find right now that were asking were uh, paired up with the other issue. And you can see 10 bucks at auction right now and then 16 bucks uh, for a buy it now for the two of them together. Well, you know, again, it's not expensive, but go and dig in the cheap boxes. I'm sure you can find it. That said, I only got one more for you. I only got one more for you. I know it's a little bit of a short week. Uh, just not a lot to go going on for me to cover dollar bin digging wise, I guess. But uh, I do got one more topic to hit up. And it is once again on the DC side of things. So that story also relates to this uh, th this planet to Lazarus thing going on. Lazarus planet, that's what it is. DC's Lazarus planet is turning a forgotten hero into a very important ally. You guys remember Blue Devil? I had some, uh, some fun moments throughout the years. Got a little bit of a push when he first came out in the 80s. Uh, then, like, Shadow Pack kind of brought him back to the forefront. So you had some of that uh, darker side of the JLA dark kind of the area of things where uh, Blue Devil, you know, kind of got a little bit more, uh, more play. And uh, maybe they're bringing him back. Maybe they're bringing him back to a more featured role in the DC universe. I don't know. But that all said, if you want to find us first, you go back to Firestorm. I know you can find those Firestorm books out there because there's not a lot of good Firestorm books for you to go and pick up. So look for Firestorm number 24. And you can see right there on the cover, there is a little bullet, a little, you know, a little call out saying, hey, blue, there's a Blue Devil preview inside of this book. So, yes, inside this book, there is a preview, which some are calling the issue zero just inside uh, this book of uh, you know Firestorm. So special Blue, De blue Devil preview. Uh, like I said, I think it was back in 1984 or so. 
look for it in this issue. So this Firestorm issue is where you're going to find your first uh, Blue Devil. Uh, and with that, six fifty up to $45. So inconsistent pricing, condition sensitive, most likely. Uh, also, there's another one, Best Offer, on about $18. So, you know, could be a fun find if you, get, if you got a nice copy. And it could just be a cheap book that you get for fun. Either way, just go look for it in the cheap boxes. That's all I'm saying. And uh, asking prices are, again, in that same kind of, yeah, not too much kind of range. Five bucks, there's cheap copies, $15, $20. There are some more, more expensive ones than that. Uh, there's some graded copies as well. So if you get lucky, maybe you find uh, you know, something that's worth grading. I don't know. But if you can't find the Firestorm book, which has that preview in it, well, then just look for his first. You know, not first, but his issue one. He got his own series right after that. Uh, so the first issue, collector's item, Blue Devil number one, you know, front and center. Uh, also kind of a fun book to go out there and digging for. And you can see here, sold for uh, as cheap as like six bucks. Then uh, there's a lot of DC vintage books of, uh, looks like a run of like six Blue Devil books that only got $3. So definitely a cheap book. But then at the same time, a 9.8 sold for $150. So that's another thing. It's just because this book is cheap, if you can find a really nice copy out there, you might be able to get it graded. You might be able to make a nice return. Because for whatever reason, people love, paying for slaps and they'll pay a premium especially for little oddities and be like oh there's not too many in the census so uh, i'm gonna overpay Th there could be plenty of copies that are worth grading and in that nine eight quality it's just it's, nobody's done it just as of yet i think we covered this on uh, the tax show last night when we were talking about that teen titans 35 there were only three in the census there are two nine eights and a nine six i don't think it's because it's that hard to find that book in high grade i just don't think anybody's bothered to grade it because it's an oddball book that who the hell cares about elephant man but that said, you know, maybe you can be the one to go get your books graded and you can throw yours into the pile and get yourself 150 bucks if you find a Blue Devil number one that is uh, in really nice shape. That said, what's in the market? In the market, cheapest three bucks. Uh, copy for like $15. That's very fine in your mint. And you can see, again, there's another lot. A lot of these books you can find in lots, just random DC books packaged together. I mean, it's 30 bucks. But it looks like it's issues one through 23 plus an annual. So, uh, and the number zero. So it's like 25 bucks for 30 bucks. Ain't too bad if you're really into Blue Devil. So just something worth considering. Now, with that all said, like I said, that's all I got for you this week. Hopefully you uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you found this stuff interesting and uh, helpful. Give you something to go out there and to uh, go and hunt. Thanks for stopping by and uh, checking this out. As I said, go check out the tax show last night where we did our first... Uh, little segment where we're going to do more comic book reviews because I want to do more stuff like that. I want to do more comic book reviews, more hobby appreciation. Not while I'm showing you the market prices on a lot of these things, that shouldn't be what this is all about. At least it's not what it's all about to me. Uh, this hobby should be fun. We should do more than just worry about how much a book is selling for. We should be interested in what's going on inside the guts of that book. Is it worthwhile? Why are people paying these prices? Oh, first appearance. Just because somebody tells you there's a first appearance in it doesn't automatically mean you have to pay double, triple cover the day it comes out just because. We don't even know where the storyline's going or how important that character might be. So try to save your money. If you think about all the cash you you might spend if you're one of the ones who gets uh, hit with FOMO and you start throwing 15 bucks at some cover price book just because you could have used that money for something else, something else that you really wanted, uh, things that you talk yourself out to be like, well, you know what? I don't want to spend that much money for this comic because that's a lot. You know, 40 bucks might be a lot of money for this comic, so I don't want to spend it. Had you not bought those three crappy FOMO books, you would have had that money and you wouldn't have to think twice about it. I don't know, just things to consider. How, how we budget and how we spend, it's different for everybody. We're not all playing with the same wallets. We're not all playing with the same budgets. We're not all in the same yard. Some people are playing in those big boy yards of those uh, classic books, key books, in tens and $20,000. That ain't me. Uh, some people uh, can just be shelling out hundreds of bucks for copies here and there. I got to think twice about that stuff. That's why most of the things I do are on the cheaper side of things because, you know, this is my hobby. I do got a family. I do got a kid. I can't be spending all my money on comic books, but this is still fun. So once again, I want to do some more of the stuff to about the hobby in general, cover some things more like toys, uh, more of the reading review, that, that type of stuff too. So hopefully you're on board for that. Let me know what you think. Um, doesn't mean I'm going to stop. I'm not going to stop any of the other stuff that you guys might already enjoy. Uh, I'm just looking to just do a little bit more. 
So with that all said, thanks for stopping by and checking this out. Hopefully you're still enjoying it. Keep telling your friends. And uh, yeah, I'll be back soon with some more content. All right, later.